Hello everybody. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I did post <clears throat> before that I was going to make kind of a video like this. Um, but today I thought was the perfect day and this is going to be a longer video and I don't apologize for it because it's an issue that I am very passionate about. So today is a day of national recognition recognition, sorry, of Down Syndrome Day. And I just wanted to share like a few little things in my life um, as opposed to <laughs> this, this is little Billy. When he was a baby, he was so cute. This is my favorite picture. And then my parents and their pool tables. <laughs> I know it's got a glare and I apologize. This one is one of my favorites of Billy because he was ever so, look at him. He always loves babies. This one, I'll get into a little bit of a topic on this. We'll start with Billy. Billy was born when I was 16 years old and he changed my life forever. He changed my life in a lot of different ways. Um, I always say I grew up with him and I have and he has taught me more in life than any person that could Billy has taught me in life to never hate anybody because of their color never hate anybody because they're fat or they're skinny or they're short or they're tall Billy has taught me to never care who the hell you sleep with he knows no hate he don't give a shit. He'll give you a hug no matter who you are and what you are. And that is the way that the world should be. So if we take a step back, we can really learn from people with Down syndrome. We really can because they struggle every day. You know, not all, some do, you know, but they, they take a daily struggle and they overcome it. Billy, used to pull his teeth out of his mouth when they were loose because Gary doesn't know any pain. Right now, my baby boy has the flu and it don't phase him in the least, although I wish he would take nappies and lay down, but he has always been so strong. Many years ago, Billy broke his leg and I will share this story with you. Holly was going up the stairs and my daughter, Megan, she was little at the time, she had a little bowl of Cheez-Its on the stairs. And Billy, you know, seen Holly going up the stairs, so he picked her up and he went to, you know, go walk her down the stairs because he was always very protective of all my babies, all my babies. Billy is my oldest, and every time I had a baby, as you can see, he loved all my babies. He always, uh oh, baby. So Billy was carrying Holly down the stairs, and before any of us can reach, he, he stepped in the bowl of the Cheez-Its and the way he stepped instead of stepping this way his foot went this way and he broke his leg that child did not flinch period he just held a sissy and got her down the stairs you know it was just like two more stairs he, she just went up like three stairs three little stairs but he he's seen it you know and he's like oh baby so his leg was broken when he stepped into that bowl of Jesus, and, and, and he still got sissy down the stairs. I mean, uh, granted, it was just two little stairs, you know, because we had a, a gate there, you know, for Holly and Megan. She was young at the time. She didn't know any better. She left the little gate open, and um, they never did after that. <laughs> However, so then Billy started to crawl, and I'm like, what is he doing? You know, why is he crawling? And when I said, Bubby, can you stand up? Because I call him Bubby. Um, and my son, my second born son gave him that name because he always called him Bubby. Um, instead of brother, you know, he called him Bubby. So I still call him Bubby to this day. How you doing Bubby? <laughs> and he's just adorable. So I took him right to the doctors and hence he broke his leg. That child did not flinch when he broke his leg because he only cared about her. So let us, let us sink that in of how amazing of a human being that this this man is. And at that point, he was a child. Holly was my fourth child. 
she was born at one pound, 14 ounces. She was um, in the NICU. She was born June 18th. I did not take her home until the end of September. She was on oxygen feed tubes. I didn't want to bring any of her baby, baby pictures out like the, of her at one pound because I didn't, you know, want to. <laughs> it's my little girl. You see little tubes, look at her. And then ah, I got this little lovely picture of my baby girl. And then there's this cutie patootie little picture. And that is my son, Justin, with her. Cause she they used to lay with her cause she could lay on her back and play with, play on the floor. And I'm sorry for the glare, but these are just pictures like this, but they would always play with her. And then after we finally got that feed tube out because that feed tube was a hot mess. Oh my God. I, they wanted me to come work in the feed clinic at Children's Hospital because I found a way to help her grow. And what happened was, is she was so tiny. She had this thing called a Mickey button. At first she started with a G-tube and then they graduated her to this Mickey button. However, she was so small that that damn it would always leak around it. And she used to get so many rashes and chafing around that area. Hold on. She would get so many rashes and chafing around that area. It was so disturbing. Sorry. Let me just. Anyway. It was very disturbing. Hold on one second. <laughs> Somebody always be trying to call me. So anyway. as I'm sorry. The feed clinic. So. What I did, because Holly also had really bad reflux, like, so what I did, and I was that diligent mom, and I did not care, and the feed clinic was like, you shouldn't do that, and whatever. Oh, I did it, and I don't give a shit. I, I, I fed her every hour. The reason why she had a G-tube um, is because she couldn't suck, swallow, and breathe. She had a lot of um, respiratory issues um, from being born so prematurely and I fed her I dropped that feed down every hour because not only did it help with she wouldn't like she would be able to process it better and when I did that she started to grow and I did not care that I was up every hour it took me just a minute just to drop it wait a few minutes make sure she was okay she would be sleeping and I would drop it and then I would just go back to sleep for 45 minutes and I'd wake back up that's what I did for approximately a year. That's how I lived. And I am not regretting any any moment of it. So anyway, um, it got to the point where we could take that damn Mickey button out because she finally was able to suck, swallow, and breathe. And the day that came out was the best day of her life because then she really started to grow because the food wouldn't seep out of this damn hole. And then she made it up to 15 pounds finally, and she stopped getting RSV. She started to thrive. <laughs> Look at this baby girl. This is this is her when she was little. So I wanted to share that with you because that child, my child, fought so freaking hard to live. She fought day after day, and her struggle was real. And as a mother to go through that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing of what I did. And I'm thankful every day for what I did. And I'm thankful that I was blessed with her because she, I checked, I could not sleep. I checked on that child. I checked on her so much. And, um, we had the pulse ox, you know, that would alarm when she, I slept in her room on the floor. I would sleep on the floor or I would, you know, eventually I moved a little chair in there and I would sleep there because I was afraid that if that alarm went off, I wouldn't hear it. And there were so many times that she was rushed to the hospital because I mean, I caught it instantly. It's like, oh my God, she's not breathing right. And anyway, there's so many different stories um, of Holly's medical suffers and what she has gone through and how strong she is today and how strong Billy is today. And if you guys would like me to make videos on that, I totally and completely will. Just leave me down in the comments because I get, I do like drama, you know, commentary and stuff like that. But 
there are things in life that I find also that I would like to bring a light on this platform and say, hey, you know, so I will totally make videos. If you guys would like that, leave it down in the comments below. So anyway, in honor of Down Syndrome Recognition Day, I would like to just say that you can learn so much from these amazing people because they're not racist. They don't hate you. They don't judge you. They don't care. They're, they, they don't care at all. They just want to be loved and they want to love you, you know, and they, they stride so much and it, it takes them, you know what it teaches you guys? It takes so much muscle tone just to be able to talk. Like Billy can't like make full sentence or whatever. Holly can't, Holly can't even, she can't, she has to be on a pureed diet. She can't even, you know, she, because it, it, it really does. We take so much for granted in life. It's disgusting to be able to eat. You take that for granted because she, she can't like chew and swallow like a normal, you know, like normally you and I would, she can't do it. She has an oversensitive gag reflex and she just never maybe learned that technique of how to chew her food. She just can't. And we take that shit for granted. You know, we take the ability to walk, to talk, to eat, to live, to tweet, to do things so for granted. And we don't take that moment to stop and think and be grateful. To be grateful just for any amount of anything that you have in your life, be grateful for it. Be grateful because my son and my daughter are grateful every day of their lives. And my life has always revol revolved around my children. They are my heart, my soul, my everything, you know? So in closing, I'm going to do a little different topic because I have been um, <laughs> talking about the gym um, and that I've been going to the gym. And I have this picture here in front of me. And... This takes me a lot of courage to show you this picture, um, a lot. And yeah, wow, it takes me a lot, but I'm sorry, I'm a little emotional over my story with Billy and Holly, but I want to talk a little bit about people that are overweight. Okay. And that's why I want to tie this a little bit into judging people because I told you guys I was a big girl, right? I told you guys. And the reason why is because I have, I had thyroid disease. Now that I'm working out at the gym and everything like that, yeah, I, I'm thinner. I'm still 185, but I got, I'm still ashamed of my body every damn day of my life. I'm ashamed of it. And I am extremely ashamed of my body because from being heavy and large all my life, I got shit that just hangs, kids. I do, it just hangs and it ain't attractive, but my husband is the most wonderful man in the world and he didn't give a shit when I was big and he don't give a shit now. He loves me all much the same. However, this is a picture of me and my sister and y'all are gonna shit your pants and say, is that you? And yeah, it is. just show you. This is me. This girl right here is me. Okay. Hence, the moral of that story is, is don't think that people that are overweight shove large pizzas down their face and sit on their ass and eat Twinkies and Ho-Hos. Don't do that. Don't think it's our fault that we're fat because a lot of times it isn't. Don't assume people do you know what I was eating at this point in my life? This is, my children kept me alive at this point because had I not had my children, I would have killed myself, to be honest. I, I was suicidal and I looked at my children and I said, mm -mm, I ain't doing that to them. But I was literally eating um, chicken broth and a little bit of crackers. I would eat twice a day. Once I would eat in the morning, I would eat like, like a half a packet of oatmeal because I didn't want to eat the whole thing. And for supper, I would have chicken broth with, I would flour myself literally three saltine crackers. That's what I was eating at that point in my life. 
And I cried to the doctor, why? I don't understand. You know, they didn't believe me. They didn't believe me at all. <laughs> Thank God another doctor found out what it was and somebody listened to me because, again, the reason why I bring that up because it ties into my story of judgment and we judge people and we assume things about people that we shouldn't. And my children, and that story, but the first, my children have taught me, don't ever judge somebody for who they sleep with, what color they are, what size they are. Never, ever judge a book by its cover. Because if you read that book, you might find a lot of interesting things and you might learn something. And that is my closing in this. And I love you guys so much. And thank you for listening to my story. But I thought today would be a perfect, beautiful, amazing day to share my story about my amazing children that have taught me to be a better person in my life, that have taught me to be open-hearted, that have taught me never to judge a book by its cover, and that have taught me to always be mindful and hurtful and give everything that you can to everybody. Be giving, be humble, and be gracious. Thank you guys so much. Kisses.